when I know I'm going to be encountering a lighting scheme like this, and maybe it's not perfect, again, you can't always predict what's going to happen. I wish we could have. Um, and just to go back very quickly to something that Diana asked about the scout, the scout is absolutely essential. Whether you're doing the scout the day before, two days before, a week before, reviewing scout photos from your clients, or if the scout is the morning of the shoot. And if you photograph resorts or large spaces, very often we're shooting multiple days. That's a huge benefit. Um, you need to do your scout at the beginning and then you can really strategize. So you know, okay, I need to be here at 8.45 a.m. because that light's gonna really be pouring in and hitting the wall for me. And this, it's not always possible, unfortunately. But yes, do your scouts, strategize, game plan, so you know what room you need to be in throughout the course of the day. That said, here we are. Um, and I, I know what look I want. How am I going to get there? Um, let me back up here. And so let's just review one more time these frames, and I'll just solo them. So we have, first things first, we have our ambient frame. We have light. Uh, I called it Sun 1, Sun 2, and I named all these kind of just to make life simpler for us. There's Sun 1, and there's the bright ambient. You guys saw all of them. So let's just kind of put a mask on them all real quick, and let's just jump in and see how we can efficiently control that light and try to create that illusion of the sunlight and controlling it. So first things first, everybody's familiar with these magnificent blend modes that Photoshop offers. And for the most part, when I'm adding light to a dark shot or adding light to an area of the image that is darker, I'm going to be using lighten mode, but I don't exclusively use lighten mode. Lighten, and I'm just going to shift click on it um, to expose it. And this is in lighten mode. Experiment with these, with these blend modes. And so very, very quickly, let's talk about how, and I have a black mask here, I can bring this light in. I'll just very quickly paint it in. And you see I'm exposing that light. I'm also exposing my assistant, but I'm bringing the light into the shot by painting white over that opaque layer. Let me undo that. Um, I've actually been employing a pretty cool technique that I hope you guys will try in one or two of your future pictures. And for that to work, I'm gonna show you how I can create a mask, basically influence this mask with, some, with a more precise method. And you see what I'm doing here. I'm drawing a line and I'm trying to match the angle of this light. Now, this is not an exact science, okay? This is something that you're gonna need to do trial and error with. But let's just play with it and let's see what we can come up with. I'm gonna to come to here. I'm gonna come right to the top here, or maybe a little bit lower because light could be pouring through there, why not? And technically speaking, because the sun is so far away, <laughs> it's such a specular source, um, because of the distance of the light source, in this case, the sun, to these, what, what are, will ultimately become shadow sources, this should theoretically be parallel lines, okay? In other words, the, the line I'm drawing and the, the top line should be parallel. In other words, it really shouldn't be kind of splaying out like this. However, this is not a scientific method. I, I, I'd like to think there should be, in everything we do, a large degree of creative license. So let's just play with it a little bit. Now, maybe that's a little big, but let's just have some fun with it. Now I can very easily hit, hit Command I, um, which is invert, and it automatically, let me deselect, basically cuts out a hole in that mask. Another way of doing it is to invert the colors and hit delete, and now you're inverting, you're, excuse me, you're deleting. No matter how you want to arrive at this, here we are. And so we've got this sense of a beam coming through, bear with me, the window. Now, because this is a mask, this, this layer is completely editable. So what I would recommend doing just to start is play with a Gaussian blur. What does it do for us? And this morning when I was putting the images together for, for us today, 
I kind of felt that 34 pixels was the right feel um, for this. But you can certainly go harder if you want to. You can go softer if you want to. And you can also vary your, your degree of blur by having it start out sharp and then creating a secondary mask where it becomes more blurred. But let's not get too deep. Let's just go with 34 because honestly, I think that feels pretty good. And if you hide this layer, take a look at what was there. It is a little bit, it's not that hard. It's got a little bit of a softness to it. Does that make sense? And so what I've done here is just kind of enhance it. Um, and that's a pretty good place to start. But before we start editing this mask, something that's really cool that we can do is we can apply this mask to my other frames. So for example, if I hide this one and I unlock this one by revealing it, by clicking on it, I can drag by option dragging this mask and replace it. And so basically I now have repeated the same mask through both of my sunlight sources, if you will. It's pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna hide this one and let's just take one at a time, one at a time. And first things first, we just we don't need it that big, do we? So I'm going to grab my eraser. Let me reduce the flow slightly here. I don't need to move quite that fast. First things first, let's take out what we know has to come out. And that's our assistant. That's our lighting instrument. By all means, zoom in and make sure we didn't miss anything. Um, but that does feel pretty good. There's no reason why we can't go ahead and edit this. Now, what else is it doing? Where else is it working? Where else is it not working? I actually think it's working fantastic on the wall. I'm not so sure it's working great on the floor. So let's just go ahead and erase it on the floor. I don't think we want double shadows. We want to enhance the shadows that are there. We don't want to confuse them. So I'm basically going through right now with my eraser and looking for areas of the picture that don't work, where the mask is kind of thwarting us a little bit. And because I was a little bit imprecise there, I might have to get a little bit bigger here. You see what I'm doing. <clears throat> I'm also taking it off the carpet a little. I wanna make sure that, and I'm gonna shut it on and off. Where is it working for us? Where is it not working for us? I think it actually doesn't need to be on this wall. And this is very subjective, you guys, because I want to bring my attention to the art piece. This isn't necessarily a beautiful area of the picture. I did ultimately crop out the entire window. And if you see the images on my website, if you see the images in any of my social media, I just felt like the image looked better, more tight, and more focused. <clears throat> that said, um, uh, let's leave it as is for now because we want to challenge ourselves how to make this kind of work for us. Now, the fact that this is on a, on a layer, if we feel like, wow, this has just gotten too big, I can always reduce the opacity of it. There's, no, there's nothing that says I need to go full blast on this. I can play with it. For the time being, let's leave it on full blast because I want to get the full kind of capability of what it's doing. And let's look, look one more time. Where is it functioning? Where isn't it functioning? And I see a little bit of something, take a look, right here. I'm gonna back up again. And I'm actually gonna add a little bit more right here to kiss this. I'm not just serves erasing, I can also add. And that actually just kind of brings out that, that, that green just a little bit. Play with it, you guys. This is part of the, of the creative you know, aspect of this. Last thing I'll do, and I'm going to move on to the next layer, is not only do I not want it on the floor, I actually don't think it belongs on the back edge of the wall either. And you see I'm taking it off. It's just kind of helping frame the picture a little bit. And the tail end of this shaft is coming from the real sun. It kind of just makes the illusion work a little bit better. Okay, I'm just going to add a little bit more back here. You see what I'm doing? Okay, let's look at the next one. And again, we're going to turn it on and turn it off. And because I have the same mask active, it's just making life a little bit simpler for the case of our demo. But by all means, 
play with a second mask and and why not why not have fun with it okay so let's first things first we'll keep the mask and i'm going to take out what we know isn't isn't working okay and just because i placed this kind of strategically which is the left side of the picture look at how easy it was to take my lights out now i'm getting a pretty hot area here I can choose to selectively airbrush that out, which is really the simpler solution. There are other ways of toning that um, that are a little bit more involved. I always look for the easiest solution uh, and one that gives us the, the most effective result. Um, so I am seeing this is really helping. I'm getting a little bit maybe too much here. Okay, and I can, I can reduce this a little if I felt like it was too much. I don't need it so much there. I don't need it so much there. I love this kind of imperfect quality of what's happening there. Okay, let's continue because there's more that we can do with this mask before we move on. For fun, okay, I can group them and let's just turn them off and on. That's without it and that's with it. Now it's a little big, admittedly, and if you wanted to, as a group, reduce the effectiveness of it, you can. But let's deal with them individually for the time being, because I actually think it's more of the first one that's the culprit here, because it, 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 this of how close it was to the wall, it became a little too strong. And I also think the angle of the light created more of a color issue for me, where this starts to feel a little bit, remember it felt a little bit cool in the last one. So let's address that. And this is actually a pretty cool lesson where I can demo how I, layer by layer, impart not only color or tone or exposure to an addition to an individual layer. So I created a levels adjustment layer, and then I've and if you hold the option key down, you're basically clipping it to the layer beneath. So this, for instance, I can make it brighter. I can make it darker. You get the idea. <clears throat> what I want to do here is change the color a little. Um, I think I'm gonna take this a little bit of blue out and I'm gonna take that blue out from the mid-tones, from the gamma uh, portion and just taking it out two or three points. This may not be translating on your computer, but you definitely feel the benefit of that. I'm, I'm gonna add one point of red. You see what I'm doing? I'm, I'm just kind of warming it up slightly, very slightly, two or three points. Of, of, of yellow, one point of red, and it's very subtle, but you know, this is about bold strokes, but also being subtle where you have to be. Okay, so this is now tied to that sun, sun one layer. That feels pretty good. Let's just demo a little bit. Let's have a little bit more fun. And this may or may not look good, but let's increase the flow just for a second. In fact, let's increase the flow to 100 and leave the opacity at 100 just for a second. If I get my eraser out and I erase here, let me make sure I have the mask selected. Okay, I do. If I erase here and I'm drawing a line, you see what I've done? I've shift clicked from up here down to where the rest of the light is. Now that may not look that great. And again, that was at 100%, 100% flow, but I'm erasing portions of the mask just to you know extend my um the projection the illusion of light uh and if we really like that look now we've done some custom editing on it at this point um in fact let me do this let me group this i'm going to put a mask on it this is the better way to do it because now with my eraser i can erase all of it okay let's get this to where we think it's going to work however i actually think opacity 100 is a little much let's start with opacity say 50 and at a flow of, a, of, of 100 because and let me make sure my brush is soft let's go right up into here boom and let's just kind of follow that line down you can see it's actually here on the wall now that might be a little bit off let me try that one more time i'm going to make the brush a little smaller up here 
down to here a little bit lower, just to tweak the angle a little bit. You see what I'm doing, you guys. Um, it's a way of just creating a little bit more shape to the light, okay? Now, if I felt like I didn't get the angle right, I can make that brush a little bigger. I can reduce the opacity slightly. Let's try one more time. I actually think a softer touch is a little bit more beneficial to us. And you can kind of come in here and repeat it. You guys get the idea, okay? Where we're playing with it and just creating a little bit more shape. Okay, let's move on. Let's, I think we're starting to like it. One last thing I'm gonna do though, is I feel like this sun layer, the one that was closest to the window is just a little bit too bright. I'm just gonna reduce the opacity of it just a little bit, okay? 87%. And because I have this on a group, if I feel like the group is a little bit too big, I can reduce the opacity of the group. But we're very bold photographers today. We're going to leave it at 100. Okay, so now let's take a look at the luminosity layer. And typically, I have my ambient layer on the top. For the most part, it's either going to be in luminosity or normal. Uh, and you guys know the difference. Normal is, is Im imparting the light characteristics of this layer as well as the color characteristics. Luminosity is just the light characteristics. And so if I shift click on this, that's what it looks like with luminosity active. And this is what it looks like with normal active. It's slightly different. You're getting a more consistent color when you're doing it this way, okay? So in this particular case, I'm gonna look at my luminosity layer. I'm gonna get my brush out. And let's return this back to opacity 100 and flow at say five. And I'm basically going to brush in. And of course I could bring it in with the same technique I used before. Areas of the picture where that lighter ambient is gonna help us. And you can see it's kind of adding a little bit of glow here. If I wanted to open this up just a little bit because it's closer to the window, that which is closer to the window really shouldn't the darker shadows should be further away from the window, right? Because they're further away from the window. They're not, they're not getting the benefit of that light. Let me take a look at this group one more time. I'm gonna erase, I see a couple of mistakes that I wanna tweak. I'm gonna erase the second sun. Let me get the eraser back where it's supposed to be, which is 100 opacity and a flow of about eight. Okay, and that's definitely cleaning that up. I don't wanna have that light spilling where it shouldn't be spilling. Um, real quick, you know what? It's actually hitting the top of this furniture. I noticed that before and I did take advantage of that. Isn't that beautiful? You know, when you're being strategic about your light placements, and when I say strategic, when you, I mean in the sense that you can put a light in one spot and it can function across the entire picture plane for you. Depends on the quality of light, depends on whether it's um, uh, diffused or, or a specular light. In this case, the fact that I have light back here lets me put this beautiful top light on these pillows. Now, I guess it's debatable whether this hard shadow is too much, but that's okay. I have my luminosity and ambient layer there and I can just soften that pretty effectively. Let me back out. And that feels pretty good to me. Um, so this is starting to feel pretty good. Um, I would then take a look and say to myself, okay, what can I do to finalize this picture before I crop it? And for me, that typically is um, last, color layers or levels adjustments. In this particular case, let's have a little bit of fun. I'm gonna demonstrate one more technique and that is where I can highlight, okay, and neutralize color with a hue saturation adjustment. And you see I'm sliding it left and right to either take warmth out or add warmth. For the sake of this demo, let's say I wanted to take warmth out of that tone, just to clean up the whites a little bit. I do find myself these days, certain clients want a slightly cleaner white. I also feel like these 
kind of neutrals and it is slightly warm admittedly it's not a white it's slightly warm because of the tint of the window is leaning slightly into the cyan space so i'm going to take out i'm going to lean it towards the red slightly so i now have a hue saturation layer that's before and after but i can be a little bit more selective with it and let me demo this is actually really cool i'm on the mask of the hue saturation layer and let's try to modify that mask now of course i can erase just like I can erase any mask and I can erase it on the carpet, I'm not erasing it on the chairs, I'm erasing it from the wood. You get the idea, but there's, there's a certain lack of precision here. Now that could work and, and I can go ahead and, you know, really take my time and get rid of that hue saturation layer and make sure it's for the most part working where we want it to work. You know, it would probably be here if I was gonna keep that, okay. Let's try this one more time though. Let me uh, delete the layer mask. I'm gonna create another layer mask on it. And let me show you a fun way of dealing with it, which is kind of like a luminosity layer, a luminosity blend layer. Let me, let me rephrase that. So um, I click on the mask. I go to select by color range. Okay, now because I've already clicked on the wall, okay, and I can go to color range here for sampled colors. Most of the time I'm sticking with the sampled color. In other words, I've clicked here, okay? Remember I clicked there to drag it down because I still have that and you can keep that as a swatch by the way. And I suggest you, whenever you're clicking on neutrals, you save them as swatches. I basically have created a, a, a luminosity layer that also has color information. You can play with the threshold, in this case Photoshop very you know, interestingly calls this fuzziness. Okay, you can play with that threshold. And if I say, okay, you notice that it automatically put that luminosity mask onto my mask and it's now affecting my hue saturation adjustment. It just did so much work for me. And so you notice how the wall got cleaner. Let me over-exaggerate that by really, I'll click on it again. Okay, somewhere, it was somewhere in here, right? And that's where it was. I basically pulled down the hue a little bit. If I really go neutral, which I don't want to, look how it's isolated that color for me. This is truly a luminosity blend done with Photoshop's color range engine. And it's just pretty powerful. Um, of course, if we feel like it's too strong, we re reduce the opacity. If we feel like it got something it shouldn't or it, it, it didn't get something it should have. You can see here, oh, I wanted to get this portion of the rug. I can now paint in the rug and now I'm neutralizing the rug. You guys get the idea. So that's a little added kind of thing I wanted to throw at you. Uh, it feels pretty good. I've neutralized the, the, the yellows a slight amount. Let's just say 76%. And at this point is when I would say, okay, it's time to do my retouching. I would hit Command, Option, Shift, E, which creates a snapshot layer on the top, retouch. And here is where I would go in and do my refined retouching. Um, this particular image doesn't have a ton of it, but if I wanted to, and yes, in the past when I delivered this image, I was very unhappy with how this curtain was laying. One of the reasons I ultimately cropped it out is I felt like these, this mullion was not pretty. And also the curtain, even after I fixed it and corrected for it, and made it feel straighter. I still felt like it was a distraction. And ultimately, this this ends up being a more kind of cohesive image to me. And, and I, I don't mind a square format these days and I'm using one more and more. Let's just back up a minute though. But here's where I would do my retouching. And something for sure I, I know I would love to do is I can just, you know, select the artwork for a minute. And you can be very, very precise with the pen tool for the purposes of our demo today, I'm being moderately precise with the lasso. And I am creating a selection. And when you have a selection active and you create an adjustment layer with that selection active, okay, it automatically gives you a masked, let me back up, adjustment layer. And so I have the levels adjustment only hitting that artwork. So if I wanted to increase that contrast a little bit, if I wanted to make it pop a little bit, um, if I wanted to 
boost any of the color palette, which is, I, if you look at the image on my website, I did this by just adding a couple of points of blue into the mid range of the image. Uh, I also think when you really crank down your histogram like this, yeah, true black, but how often is anything true black? I mean, there's detail here. This is a piece of art and that detail is there. So yes, you can bring the, you know, the contrast down, you can bring your black points down, but I typically will compensate backwards by opening up my, mid, my mids just a little bit. And that's kind of a nice way to, and here it is, this is before and after. You see how it just popped the artwork for us. So definitely play with your adjustment layers. Uh, and you see, we had a lot of fun with um, this light projection and really created the illusion of sun coming through the window. Uh, I think in this particular case, because the window seems to end here, this feels like it's going up and above, but this, this ceiling did go up another eight feet. But that's another reason why I decided to crop in on it. I felt like the illusion was just better cropped. And so this is how the photo appears on my website for the most part. And I just think it, it feels organic and it feels really cool.